Ah, this is Brooklyn. St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics Guy. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today, ladies and gentlemen, before we jump into the topic, I wanna thank you guys for liking the video, for subscribing to the channel. I sincerely appreciate all you guys coming along, following along, and supporting. I absolutely love it. Now, today, what we're gonna be yapping about is a little bit about the placement of the floating raft in relation to the fish tank. Got a viewer that wants to know if, it, if it's okay to combine the floating raft with the fish tank. Some of you guys out there who's been doing aquaponics for a while, you may have ran across this question before and you might have even done this before, right? So let's jump into that and let's find out what we got going on here. So this question comes from Tyler Burton. What's going on, Tyler? It says, can you have the plant rafts on top of the fish tank so that the system is an all-in-one system, that the fish tank and plant rafts are all together? Okay, Tyler, so we're gonna get ready to get into this right now. Now, so he's asking basically, can you place the floating raft directly on top of the fish tank because we see that water there the fish tank got your fish in there and it's like why not you see the surface area all nice and open why can't we just place the floating raft on top of that and make things simple right simplify it to the max so it sounds good in theory but there's a few issues that you're gonna run into when you try to run it this way look I've done it this way too a few years ago I tried to just being you know curious seeing what happens, but you know, the results aren't favorable. So let's get into three things that, you know, are gonna happen when you try to run a system this way, placing the floating raft on top of a fish tank. So the first thing that we have to consider is that we know that when the plants are growing on, uh, on top of the floating raft, as they start to get, you know, more mature, those roots begin to expand and and if they're placed on top of the fish tank, they will begin to expand into the fish tank. And depending on the type of fish that you have in there, many of those fish have a thing for plant roots. For instance, if you have, if you're growing tilapia and you place, you know, your, your, um, you have your roots growing into the tank, tilapia, they have an appetite for, uh, for plant roots. So eventually what they're going to do is they're going to end up munching and eating on the plant roots. So like, for instance, I told you guys um, uh, a few weeks ago that I had a tilapia that jumped in here and in these inside of here, I had to get it out. Now, if I were to leave that tilapia in here, it would have had its way with the plant roots and I would have lifted up the raft and I would have had ball headed roots, right? The roots would have been looking like this, right? And that's a no go. That's a no go. When the plant roots are, um, you know, are, are munched on and they're stripped from the plant, that's gonna stump the, um, the growth of the plant and it could eventually cause the plant to die. So we don't wanna have the uh, fish being, uh, having access to the plant roots, especially if you're growing a fish like tilapia. Some of you guys out there, you guys know what I'm talking about. You guys who've been doing aquaponics for a while and maybe this has popped up in your mind, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So that's the first no-go. Second of all, you know that after when you feed fish, if you look in the tank, you're gonna see strands and chunks of solids floating and rising uh, uh, on the surface, floating around, maybe swirling around in the tank, right? Those are non settable solids, meaning they take a certain amount of time for those to sink. Now, when you have your um, plant roots in there, what's gonna happen is those non settable solids and even settable solids as well, find solids that are floating in the system, what they're gonna do is they're gonna adhere to those roots. Those roots are now gonna become a type of solids filter. And this is, this is a no-go, this is something that's not good. Because what happens is, over time you get the feeding, though those solids um, adhere to the roots, what it's gonna do is that it's gonna eventually end up blocking the path uh, or the uptake of oxygen and nutrients for that plant. So you'll see the plant roots end up getting slimy, 
right? They won't have access to oxygen and, and, and nutrients, and then they'll end up dying off, right? So that's another thing that you want to look out for. What you ideally want to do is you want to have filtered water come in contact with plant roots, although ev uh, eventually you're still going to have, uh, you know, some fine solids that attach to the plant roots. We want to prevent as much solids as possible to get into the plant roots as we can, especially in a deep water culture setup or floating raft system, right? We want to prevent that from happening. So placing it directly on top of the fish tank is just going to give those roots access to all types of solids, right? Latching on to the, um, the plant roots. And that's not what we want to happen. Another thing that you're going to experience if you place the um, floating raft on top of the, uh, the fish tank, is that when you go to, um, you know, you want to have access to your fish or if there's something in the, the fish tank that you need to get a hold of or even when you're feeding your fish, which is a daily basis, happens on a daily basis, what you're going to end up having to do is remove the rafts, which are plants, each time, right? So you have your fish tank, your floating raft on top of it. You need to get in there and feed because you want to feed, you want to evenly distribute the feed in the fish tank. You don't want to just feed in one spot. Right, so you're gonna have to end up moving rafts each time, sliding rafts over, taking and pulling rafts out, and this is extra labor that we don't want no parts of. Not the high class grower, we don't want parts of that. Right, we wanna avoid that. So that's gonna be tedious, and it's gonna be excessive labor, and that's not what we wanna what we want to deal with. Having to move the, the raft each time we wanna get in there and feed, and each time you wanna harvest fish, you're gonna have to be making because you can have, here's the thing with the fish. Even if you don't, say you have your, your, you know, you have your fish tank and you have your whole fish tank filled with uh, floating rafts. Say you move a quarter or say you move 75% of those rafts out of the way and you have a quarter of the raft left. The fish, they somehow find their way over and cover themselves with the roots inside of the tank and they'll hide all in between there. So you're originally going to have to remove that as well if you want to get all the fish out. So it's just extra labor that we don't have no time to deal with. You see what I'm saying? No time to deal with that. So ideally what you want to do is you want to avoid placing the raft on top of the fish tank. Although it sounds like a hot idea, in theory, it's a lot more problematic. You want to keep it separate and treat it as an individual component. And this, my friends, will make your life a thousand times easier when you're dealing with aquaponics, right? So hopefully that has helped you out, Tyler. That's giving you a better insight on why I would recommend you not do that. Um, you know, the, the choice is ultimately yours, but over here, I wouldn't recommend you doing anything like that because the pros do not outweigh the cons. So hopefully that has helped you out and anyone else out there that's thinking about doing something like that, because I know that comes to mind. It came to my mind when I start. Like, man, why not place this raft on top of this fish tank? You see what I'm saying? And make it just as easy as possible. But, you know, there's a price to pay for doing that. So, like I said, if any of you guys out there have other questions and comments, make sure you guys leave them down below. Make sure you guys leave some good comments, some good um, uh, feedback, and some good questions. Some detailed questions so I can help you guys out. Let me know what you guys want to yap about in the aquaponic community, the high class grower community. Let me know what you guys want to yap about and then um, I can end up making some videos about it. Whatever it is that you're um, having a hard time with or you just don't understand, let me know and then I can add that to the queue. If you guys need more help, make sure to click on the link below, get you a free aquaponic starter guide, get a free aquaponic course and get in there and, um, and enjoy that. That's going to definitely help you out. We also got paid courses at the school of aquaponics.com. That's aquaponics paradise. Get in there, teach you the fundamentals of aquaponics so you can learn exactly what you need to know in order to get growing with aquaponics. Right. With that being said, I want to thank you guys once again for liking the video, subscribing to the channel. I absolutely appreciate you guys out there. The viewers, I got a wonderful set of viewers. You guys are always coming through and being appreciative and showing support. So I want to thank you guys for that once again. So with that being said, until next time, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics reminding you to stop walking
and get you a car.